I have studied World War II history, tactics, battles, fortifications all of my life. I was in the army, I lectured on German and Russian tactics. And I thought I knew everything in all of the important parts of that war. A war that permanently changed the world. So much new world changing technology was created then. Much of it in secret German facilities, hiding underground and run by the SS. In this series, I'm trying to uncover the still classified and secret special programs run by the SS, separating fiction from facts by following the documents and the credible human sources, comparing it to what is actually on the ground. During the war, SS special projects and weapons manufacturing research was led by SS General Hans Kammler. He had huge underground excavations going on in Germany, Austria, Poland, Czechoslovakia, an entire special research team only under his supervision and that of the SS. Now for the most part post-war, these are labeled as basic underground factories for ME-262s or rockets and some for potential new headquarters for Hitler. But that is too simple of an explanation, and it seems to cover the truth of what was really going on in these places, especially if we begin to compare the various files that have come to light since then. They paint a vastly different picture of what was really going on, such as wartime documents from AEG that describe special projects decisive to the German war effort, as well as briefings to Hitler which describes progress and expected start dates of operations of such as the RISA project. Now this is telling me that this could not just have been another headquarters. Over the next two episodes I will try to break down the RISA project, walk the locations and give you all a better idea of what it looks like so together we can find out what actually might have happened or was planned here. Certainly entire factories were moved underground and into tunnels, such as the Dora Mittelbau was one of such projects, where the V2 ME262 production moved into existing tunnels in order to shield them from Allied bombing. I visited Dora Mittelbau because it is one location where we know for a certainty that large rockets and jet fighters were produced, and after the war we know that the Russians blew up the ends of the tunnels leaving them looking pretty much like they look today. Do make a note of how a large destroyed tunnel entrance look like. We'll get back to these later. Also remember the Dora Mittelbau facility was where Kamla had left his second in command to hand over the entire facility intact with all the scientists from Peenemünde to the Americans, which happened. They handed them over to the same U.S. 3rd Army under General Patton, who also liberated Pilsen and the vast Skodewerke and the Jonstel tunnels, just a few miles away from where the SS had developed and possibly tested several nuclear devices. So what was the Riese project? In the mountains of Lower Silesia, today Poland, they dug nine separate tunnel systems. They were constructed underground by the use of huge amounts of forced labor. One of them was under the castle of Fürstenstein. For each location, a concentration camp was built, 13 subcamps in all, and a hospital. They were all drawing labor from the Großhausen main camp. Over 13,000 slave laborers worked on the Riese project. Now, this does not include the forced laborers or skilled laborers and construction crews. An enormous amount of money were spent, and resources were used here in this relatively small area. Local factories were taken over, power plants, mines, and castles as well. And at least 5,000 slave laborers died during the construction of the Riese. Oberbauleitung Riese was in effect. Roads were constructed, tunnels were dug, bridges were built. And according to Albert Speer, on June 20, 1944, over 28,000 people were working on the Riese project, making it the biggest in wartime Germany. The construction was initially too slow, and the SS and Tod organization took over under the supervision of Chief Engineer Franz Saver Dosch. 
According to witnesses, in 1945, an order was given for more prisoners to be brought in deliberately to mask the work that had been done and make it appear incomplete. This in the face of the war being slowly lost and the Russians approaching. In February, some of the sites were evacuated, while others continued to work right up until May 6, 1945, two days before the Russians took over the area. One of the officers in charge was named Anton Dolmos. He was either SS or Luftwaffe. He remained and offered the Polish government plans for the tunnels. He lived in the area for a while and then he vanished to the west. From him, we know some of what was expected to have happened here. One of the largest tunnel systems is the osufka saufenwasa complex. It is 750 meters above sea level, with four large tunnel entrances, internal guard rooms, and some completed sections that can still be seen today. Contemporary witnesses describe how underground rooms and stairs had been covered up, and above ground there are some very mysterious buildings that we'll look into further with the help of experts. Much of what we also know from here came from Albert Speer's ministry files. One in particular describes how Hitler was briefed constantly on the Riesa project and he took a keen interest in this project in particular. These documents also mention adjacent secret projects and their progress. And remember, von Arden testified that he had installed several cyclotrons in the Riesa locations, not to mention Jakob Spornberg's post-war testimony of having evacuated, well, something he did not even know what quite was. The German Reichpost was also here in force setting up underground bunkers, and by 1944, 431 kilometers of communication cables have been laid here. Do remember, von Ardennes nuclear research lab was co-funded by the Reichpost as well. On September 15, 1943, Albert Speer, Xaver Dorsch, and Leon Müller, construction superintendent, met, as Hitler had decided to build a new headquarters in Lower Silesia. The foreign ministry was already represented here at the Castle Fürstenstein along with the tort organization, and of course the SS was ever present. It is confirmed by German historian Professor Franz W. Scheidler that both Hitler's new headquarters and a huge underground industrial facility was to be built here in the Owl Mountains. From 1944, SS Hauptsturmführer Dr. Siegfried Schmeichel, architect, supervised the entire works. Do remember the Henge location in Ludwigsdorf was not included in the Riese plans, and the SS had already moved into this area before. A German's quality. Yeah. No. This was uh, used special cement from Italy. High quality cement. Yeah. Standing here at the entrance, you can feel the cold air. Yeah. It's chilly down there, isn't it? So, did the Germans destroy the original entrances? Or? No, no, no. no. Uh, so this is original? Yeah. Uh, here was uh, one engine, yeah. And with, with the line uh, put uh, the wagons from uh, outdoor here, yeah, into, into, into underground. So this is what it looked like or has it been filled up or... I mean it's been reinforced, the reinforcing is new. Okay. This. Ah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's already helping. And then probably. First, first, uh, solid position. Yeah. Here's the first lay down fuel fire. Inside a bunker entrance. I think you all need to remember that is rather important. Yeah, we're inside the bunker, and here you have the machine gun position, but not, which is a weird place to put it, when I say that, because here's the other one. Mm -hmm. So there you have one machine gun safety. You have one guard in there pointing into a wall, which means something passed him there that was important. For, uh, for proofing, all people that are coming into, into undergrounds. So, yeah. so there's a tunnel under here, uh, in there, there would have been a tunnel Yeah. that is now collapsed or destroyed. Yeah, yeah. destroyed. 
because he would some he would have, people have to go past him and not just run this way. I'm surprised there's no one sitting facing that way or facing that way. This is another exit, right? Or is that a tunnel? That's on the, on the technical tunnel. That's it. Uh, for, 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 for workers. Um, but uh, finally, it uh, must be, this tunnel must, must be higher yeah. uh, and, and bigger. You know? So because pe so people would come in from the road. That's the regular entrance, or was? Yeah. But, and then they would have to come check in with him and go this way right, yeah. if they had to go do something serious. And then that way for technical. And is there just a room in here, or? Uh, second checkpoint. Second checkpoint. And I think um, here was, was uh, must be. Yeah. Um, install some some gasproof doors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gasproof and and, and uh, um, air move. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, well, door. This actually built up. This is not just carved out. This is built up with cement in between. Yeah. Now these slabs are interesting because. Uh, not, uh, not, 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 not. Is this mirror? Ah, that's right. Second, right. <laughs> second, second guard position. Hmm? It's literally like seeing a pillbox yeah. built inside. And here you had a very serious door. Oh, this was a gas door. You see the same. You have the arch up here, and then another roof has been put in. So the electrical cable would have come through here. We know. So, and here's a, again, serious hinged door. And we're back in this room. Access panel for the above. The steel door into, into, what was in there? Uh, connect. Uh to other with, 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 with the uh, tunnel. Okay. Yeah. Can, uh, this uh, higher part is corridor. Corridor for uh, all installations, uh, water, um, ventilation. Yeah. So that all ran up there. This is the third checkpoint? Uh, checkpoint, two checkpoints. And this here ahead of us, that's... So you had a small access tunnel, I'm guessing. Uh, or, as we call it, storage. This is the end of the tunnel, or is this... Now remember Speer's briefing to Hitler that parts of the Riese project tunnels had been completed and something could begin from that November. They were already building and digging as hard as they could, so what was that something that may already have begun? 
Und dann. Now, if you compare this to the tunnels under Wolf's Lair and Ober Salzburg, you'll find this is far, far bigger. This is a completely different look and feel. This is much more industrial and somehow feels more secure. So here's a room. Uh, here we can see the destroyed uh, part. Yeah. Of, uh, this from the other side? Yes. Ah. Now I get it. I have no idea if the camera does, but I get it. So that was blown. I mean, we'll have to, and you have the doors coming here. That would have to be a third option. In there in the dark that you can't see, huh? Now I'm surprised when we see your steps upstairs. Why am I seeing steps up? I am very surprised. This is how we found it. Yeah. Looking at these in there. And the wall of those pillars down there follow the road a little bit. Of course there is here for the platform, so that doesn't matter. I'm very confused. <laughs> the underground tunnels are now going up. Very unusual. So mining was going on in here as well. There's something at the other end. So tunnels shoot off to the side. So did, did, did they mine in here as well? Mining? Yeah. Did they, did they do mining? For material? Material? Yeah. Did they mine coal or? No, the base. They only mine the stone in here. Yeah, the rocks. <laughs> I'll tell you a secret. You don't need machine guns to protect people who are mining stone. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> so. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. We're back to that again. Some of the original drills, I'm guessing, or some of the drills Very similar. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, this is where the, where the ships are <laughs> for the sailing tour. So all these are filled with water. For the extreme, uh, extreme cross. <laughs> This was uh, really important for Nazi engineers, yeah? Yes, it was. And uh, this place, underground, can save in, in the case when uh, Russians or Americans use the atomic bomb, yeah? They actually expected that might happen. Yeah. That's what, that's what they wanted for bomb proof at the beginning of the war. Mm -hmm. So being 40, 50, 60 meters on the ground, we're in pretty good shape down here. And what do we have here? They were going to build rockets here, was that the idea? Um, rockets, I think not. Maybe parts of, of rockets, yeah. But nothing was built here that we know of? Uh, nothing was made here? It was abandoned before? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's not ready yet. This is 
is something else. This is something else. See the bare rock up there yeah. and then the wood support. There is uh, really interesting that uh, the technology of Bogas house. And full stop for a minute. We are passing triple machine gun positions, gas tight doors, and what looked like collapsed tunnels that could possibly lead down to underground. And you have these huge, huge halls. And this is an enormous complex. And you're telling me this is going to be a bunker for Hitler? I am not buying it. Down in another wet tunnel. And this is my idea of a romantic getaway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Same construction. So a bunker structure inside. This actually looked reinforced. This is reinforced. There's rebar in here. And there's rebar um, on the wall. Collectible parts. Collectible parts. This is uh, purpose built. This drain canal I've never seen before. Uh, what was well, what a canal? Yeah. But and why but why like that? This we got less radiation in here than anywhere so far on this entire trip. Yeah. I've also seen a lot of German tunnels and never any access ports like this. Yeah. Yeah. But here, yeah. No. This is another here. Yeah. I mean, could it be an access tunnel where you could have cranes or uh, something lift? I think here can be uh, some dispatching room. Dispatching room for. For all this object, maybe for for uh, rocket platforms. Yeah. This is another very large tunnel. So this yeah. is what you would need to build. Here is uh, entrance or entrance number two. And that's big enough for vehicles. And uh, when the walls will be ready, ready, yeah. Uh, the tunnel will be big, uh, high, 10 meters, yeah. and uh, wide, 6, 7 meters, yeah? It's uh, an out place for some, some uh, platforms with rocket, yeah? They can be, goes out, uh, goes uh, on uh, um, the position on the on 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 on, on yeah. the uh, this mountain, yeah, and uh, can be ready in uh, maybe forty minutes. Yeah. That, that's that's right. That's what, what is this? No, oh, no, no, no. What's in here? It's, it's modern. Yeah. Oh, this. But not this. This too. Modern installation. Yeah, that. Yeah, but, but this? Only, no. Oh. This is this is uh, uh, like 
this, this stale uh, elements of, of, of walls. Yeah? These are the, uh, these are the original. original. And the red brick? Yeah. No. Uh, yes? Yeah. The red yeah, brick original. Too. Now, certainly towards the end of the war, the V-2 rocket and the Heinboden rocket had been perfected to the point where it could, in theory, be used as a battlefield weapon. However, Moscow is more than a thousand miles away, and it seems unlikely that even if you could assemble and position rockets in these tunnels, wheel them out, fire the rockets, and potentially hit Moscow with one of them, even with a tactical nuclear weapon in the tip, it is just not enough. It seems unlikely that this much effort was put into something that would only fire small rockets or missiles. And these tunnels are not big enough for what would eventually be known as the A-10 or the America Rakete. So what were they doing here? It had to be something else. Besides the possibility of protecting dignitaries and state departments and Hitler himself, there must have been something bigger. A lot of industrial infrastructure have been put in place here, communications, but there's something else. There's something missing. So much resources were spent here. Again, imagine Germany is fighting England actively and they are invading. The cupola only had 1400 people working on them. Here, so much more was spent, and yet I'm not seeing it in the tunnels. This purpose was made up in three steps. Yeah. First step was making the top, uh, top uh, part. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second step, uh, in second step, was make uh, this uh, lower uh, level co corridor. Third step, uh, this uh, side. This was wartime construction. Nothing, nothing before. Yeah. So we're definitely not, not buying the rock. We're not, we're not buying the rock story. We're not. We're not buying the mining rock story. That might have been a good byproduct. I'm guessing. I mean, if you're going to mine, if you're going to dig a factory underground, that's great. If you can dig a factory underground, where you can use the material. For other things, you have a double purpose. Make sense? Uh, there can exist really big net of corridors, like a brick Dora in Germany. But these corridors, these tunnels are lower. Are these tunnels the same size as Dora or is no, Dora bigger? No, no or lower, the Dora is bigger. Dora is bigger, so not enough place to um, produce Rockets. Uh, rockets uh, V2. But uh, here I can. can, can uh, it, it's, it's possible to produce some parts of, of this rocket. And yeah. they were not finished. I mean, they weren't finished building just because the war decided to end. It wasn't their plan to be finished. Now the, the, the final plan we don't know, yeah. Um, uh, a plain place for 20,000 people. Yeah, a big bunker, underground city or, or underground town, yeah, for 20,000. People. That was what Albert Speer was planning for this place? Yeah, Albert Speer. Uh, right, uh, um, it's in uh, his, his memory, yeah. So 
Albert Speer himself was here. Was he must have been here since he had plans for it yeah. and wrote about it in his book. Small times. Small times. Uh, he was visit this place. I need to reread his book. Uh, memories. I know, it's like 800 pages long. So, so there's another part of this. Is, is it built or is it, is it planned? Uh, planned. Okay. And uh, on the ground are the uh, overground buildings. Uh, from uh, Albert Speer, that's uh, this object must be ready in the year uh, 46. Yeah. So maybe in the year uh, 46, Hitler will to use atomic bomb. Yeah. Here was that we have information that, 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 that uh, yeah in the complex reader uh, was died. For uh, four thousand eight hundred people, yeah. yeah you can see in uh, every, every uh, tunnels this. Uh, oh, yeah. oh yes. Uh, they was making for. for um, uh, you dynamite ma yeah. material. You drill holes, stick in dynamite, blast off, clean out. Mm -hmm. yep. Are we going up? Yeah. This is the only tunnel I've been in so far where all we have done is walk up. This is a very new experience for me. Yes, I am joking a little bit. It's a whole new perspective mm -hmm. when you realize how many people died building this and how many resources were put into building this. And it keeps coming back to the question, why? They were already manufacturing the munition. And you could do that faster above ground. You could produce more ammunition faster sitting in tents in the forest than doing this to do it. So clearly, ammunition is not just it, and rock mining is certainly not it. So, yes, there's much more to this. Speaking of much more to this, what am I looking uh, at? The original equipment, yeah, from this uh, location. These are the same electrical condu conduits that, yeah. that we found in the uh, rail station. Yeah. This is for... I'm guessing you still find bits and pieces all the time. No? Original uh, wagons. Okay. Of course, you would need them to excavate, to pull mining uh, rock and yeah. shit out. That thing is still rolling. Yeah. 75 years later. I gotta say about Very the Germans. Good. They make good quality. Any, any, any bad sounds? Yeah. It, it can work in today. in thousand years but uh, air was transported to the um, at the, at the uh, mine uh, walls where the people are working yeah there's a lot more work going into an underground bunker that people think or underground anything anything I don't think people they understand how much it takes just to run a, a pillbox with air, with gas suppression. So Italian and Czech companies worked with the tort organization building this. Yeah, yeah. And not, which makes sense because... Not, not, not uh, prisoners. Uh, prisoners are making very simple works. Yeah. Uh, like a transport of uh, works. And um, the hard labor stuff. Yeah, mine works. I'm making with with specialists. Yeah, 
and they were actual civilian companies from Czech yeah, and yeah, from Italy. Yeah, yeah. Just like just like the tort com the tort organization always mm -hmm. uh, hired local companies or businesses to come and do. Yeah. And then, of course, they would offer them the use of slave labor because that's cheaper and that's kind of what the SS did. And here down the road outside the caves is the very reason why I wanted to show you what Dora Mittelbaut looked like. Christoph always had a suspicion, but take a look at what a known tunnel collapse looks like. And there's rubble strewn all over the place, collapsed in front of the hole. And there was two railroad tracks leading here, so this is clearly where the rockets were produced and came and went. But you see all the rubble that's collapsed, rolled downhill. This looks very similar to what we found in Lower Silesia for what could be destroyed tunnel entrances. And a tunnel, yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I, I look, look at this. Tunnels, entrance, yeah. And that little alcove and the dig is now hit by trees that are easily younger than 70 years. Uh, this. Uh... But yes, I see. I see what you're saying. If this had been eroded by nature it wouldn't come down in this many pieces. Uh -oh. All these pieces is not natural. Um. Now if you explode the front of something, yeah. you get pieces. If we will found some concrete, we, we have answer. Yeah? It's possible to find I found some, some pieces of concrete. Uh, I mean, okay, okay, all right. you know how, uh, look at this. If you have something like this, this just looks like a, I mean, I've, I've seen these fields yeah. or explosives. But the, yeah, that looks like this was tooled. Uh -huh. I mean, of course a stone can break into, but this feels like it could have been, oh, damn, I don't know, I just, flat surface under this rock as well. It just I, I see corners that looks a little unnatural. And rocks that collapsed on top of each other is also rather suspect. It, it can be make it uh, with, with, with the tools, yeah? If you blew up the entrance to a tunnel, it would be the pieces from the tunnel would be underneath mm. because no, well, that's. But this looks so. Uh, this this rock is nice. It's nice. I'm gonna have to bring some and uh, frame it. it, it it's really good cover. This would be from, a good place from, to work from the radiations. Yeah, any radiations. I mean, I would have no problem believing there'll be a tunnel in here. Yeah. Because of the way this rock had been blown, you have this little hole that is unnatural. This is already just, this is shaped as an entrance to begin with in a little U shape. And then in the middle of the U shape, you have all these smaller pieces of rock that looks exactly like they would if you stuck in a bunch of explosives from the top and then blew the entrances, which means maybe there are drill marks from above. Take a nice as well. Yeah. But is that flat surface man made? It's very flat. See if up here, this would mean a little bit of a repelling job. See if you can find something. This will not hold me.
these woods are full of places like this that look like exactly what they look like. I've seen bunkers blown up in many different ways. And if they're up high, it this is usually what it looks like. I can only tell you guys what I can see because a lot of these parts the Polish government will not allow excavation. But, and granted, nature makes a lot of different shapes. But this is clearly a little alcove on the side of the road that looks like it's been dug into the mountain. And if the alcove, mind the expression, had collapsed onto itself, there would be a lot more rock. So there was a little U-shape here. If there were several tunnels, as it looks like, there's one wall and then it digs in for a good 30 meters. Then it flattens out for about 50 meters and then comes to an end, comes, sticks out, crops out about 30 meters again. I will start working on paperwork for allowance to do more research and I'll reach out to what friends I have with the Russian archives because I think that is where a lot of these secrets are to be found. So this was prisoner barracks. What did they work here as well? Was that for work or living? For living. living. They living. built concrete and every uh, day are going from here uh, to, to, to Osovka to work. So this was a concrete footing and then wood, everything else. The building was made of wood. When I was in Poland recently and I looked at on the east wall, they had prisoner barracks with foundations just like this. Uh-huh. But here we are on the foundation of one of the prisoner barracks. These were also prisoners from Kosovsen that had been sent here to work. Were these uh, this technically skilled or was this more just slave labor doing the heavy work? Uh, on, on the simple works. And do, do we know if anybody survived from here? Uh, yeah. They did. But after uh, war, nobody was asking these people about this. What what what's happened here? Yeah. Of All the people are going uh, free to the home and didn't want to hang around and do no, tours. Nobody was interested with, with 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 this story. Of course not. If you yeah. if you were here as a slave laborer, you don't really want to hang around. Crumbles. Oh, uh, rock, Sorry, rock, crush it. rock, rock crushes, rock crushes. Oh, oh, really? So they brought the rock out here and destroyed it. They crushed the rock here to make it into smaller pieces that could be transported. That does make sense. Yeah, and he uh, was uh, going. Uh, uh, trail, um, small train uh, rail. Yeah. Down, yeah. Go the materials going up. Are going up. Oh. Yeah. That does seem a lot more expedient than having people carry it. What we are looking at here are the remnants of an extremely efficient building machine. All the building materials and cement was coming up the mountain on conveyor belts processed and then transported through tunnels and holes into the main tunnels where building would take place. The rocks and debris from the tunnels were being carted out in rail carts or again on conveyor belts and turned into rolled construction material. Things like this, yeah. What is you this? can see more of, uh, of the history and uh, story of uh, uh, functionality uh, how goes it? Yeah. yeah. So this was the bottom of the conveyor belt with the engine, I'm guessing. Um, Maybe. With, with the line. The yeah. foundation of the line. With the, with the, with the line. And then the engine was be sitting here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Mounting 
uh, elements for, for engines. It's really impressive how much was here. What's even impressive, more impressive, is that we know so little about it. And so many people died here making this, and we don't even know what happened. It is the very least thing we can do for all the people who died here. Yeah. Is try to figure out what happened and why. Now, walking the Lisa Project locations today, I'm running into a problem, one of math. When I see these locations, and I know that on September 22, 1944, Albert Speer informed Hitler that 28,000 workers were currently working on the Lisa Project. 150,000 Reichmarks had been spent. 257,000 square meters of steel reinforced concrete and 213,000 square meters of tunnels. 58 kilometers of road, six bridges, 100 kilometers of pipelines had been laid. However, today, the total volume of these facilities does not exceed 100,000 square meters. Rough calculation gives us the amount of concrete used figures about 70,000 square meters. You compare this to the data provided by Spear, we are missing over 100,000 square meters of tunnels and 180,000 square meters of concrete. Where did this go? Work on the Baufahabe S. Dreis Riese was carried out in the strictest of secrecy. The 35 square kilometer area was completely sealed off. Speergebiet, you were only allowed with a special pass and the work went on 24 hours a day. However, there's more. The Germans who lived in the area before the war did later testify that certain parts of this area was forbidden entry from before 1943. Mr. Stanislav Schulga, a former laborer, testified that he was brought into the camp at Kolsche at the end of 1942 and sent to work on a tunnel excavation, probably in Osufka. An Italian mining specialist living in Gluska stated that he came to the area in 1935 and was initially employed at the quarry as Gluska, but in 1937, after signing a secrecy waiver, he was transported along with several other mining specialists several times a week to the Soviet mountains near Voslau, where he worked on tunnel excavation. Now, I wonder why the official story wants us to recognize 1943 as the starting date for the Riese, when something clearly started long before that, according to many witnesses that could still be found and have testified after the war. According to Helena Putlin, born in Valin, she stated that in 1938 the forests on the slopes were already fenced off. Roads that branch off everywhere, up into the woods, guard towers, Access control. Well, this one looks a little strange with the opening facing outwards. So it's making me think it might have been placed here. And on the remains of another small gauge railroad leading into the tunnel. If you think that they wheeled things into the mountains, hid them there, trucks of gold going in, then you blew up the back part of the mountain so nobody could find it. That can be. Let me explain to you why. When you dig into rock, you can tell where the rock begins, where it ends, where it's been dynamited and cleared out or not. So if you go into a tunnel and you blow it, it'll be full of rubble, not solid rock. So anybody looking for anything they think you hid behind there, they'll know this is where to look and they'll remove the rubble and find your precious tunnels. And you know what? They weren't that dumb. They knew that if they hid it in a tunnel and just sealed it by blowing it, it would be found. Unless, of course, you blew the outside of the mountain, planted some grass, some trees, in front of what you blew, dirt on top. That would have been easier to hide. And in 1947, Sykrinev Moshinevich editor of the Polish Word, he wrote a series of reports on trips to the area where he himself describes the underground city, barracks, the SS city, now decaying and unpreserved. Together with them, a huge amount of cement was deteriorating. 
There were still 10 million paper cement bags of 50 kilograms each left on the site. And the number is the best evidence of the enormity of the planned structure. And by then, already a hundred train wagons with 15 tons of cement each had already been taken away by the Russians. So clearly, something was being built here that we cannot find or see today. According to surviving witnesses, the few there were, towards the end, 100 to 200 prisoners were used to hide or disguise underground rooms and stairs where after they were killed. Immediately upon their arrival, the Russians sealed off the area, just like they did in Ludwigsdorf, and shipped out everything they found back to Russia. I wanted to put things in perspective. More people worked here on the Riese than in Dora Mittelbau and La Cupola and Bergkristall. And yet there's no signs of much they did, except half-finished tunnels. That does not add up. I think there's a fairly strong possibility we're looking at a heavy water production facility. Now we will go and I will show you a room for Hitler. <laughs> 